Mulher, você sabe qual é o plano de Deus para a sua vida? Eu, Xana Dong e minha amiga Débora Pizarro desenvolvemos juntas, há um tempinho atrás, um conteúdo feminino para um curso online chamado Uma Mulher Virtuosa em Construção. Em Uma Mulher Virtuosa em Construção abordamos as virtudes que uma mulher precisa trabalhar nela para ser transformada de dentro para fora. O processo de transformação já começou em nós. Agora, Deus tem planos maiores para mim e para você. Planos ainda mais desafiadores. Planos de sobrevivência. Planos que precisarão de muita bravura, ousadia e coragem. Vivemos em tempos de guerra. E como mulheres, travamos lutas diárias. E é preciso ter muita coragem para vencer as nossas batalhas. Por causa de tudo isso, nós desenvolvemos para vocês um novo conteúdo feminino chamado Uma Mulher Corajosa em Construção. É coragem que Deus espera de nós, mulheres. E é preciso coragem para aceitar uma santa convocação. Nós aceitamos corajosamente esse recrutamento, mas não é qualquer tipo de recrutamento. É um recrutamento celestial para fazer parte do exército de Deus. É para formar um exército de batalhão de mulheres corajosas. E o dia da convocação é hoje. Se eu fosse você, eu corajosamente aceitaria esse desafio. As estratégias dessa guerra estão no nosso curso online Uma Mulher Corajosa em Construção, que você pode encontrar pelo site do ministériodasmulheres.com.br. Vamos nos apresentar generosamente para lutarmos juntas essa guerra. É vida ou morte? Você acha possível ser uma noiva gloriosa e uma guerreira ao mesmo tempo? Mulheres incríveis acreditam nessa misteriosa combinação. E não somos nós tais mulheres? Sim, somos incríveis. Você e eu fomos criadas para resistir. Nós somos a resistência de Deus. Vivemos em tempo de guerra. E como mulheres, travamos lutas diárias. E é preciso ter muita coragem para vencer nossas batalhas com resiliência e fé. É coragem que Deus espera de nós, mulheres. E é preciso ter coragem para aceitar uma santa convocação. Se aceitarmos corajosamente esse recrutamento celestial, teremos a honra de fazer parte do exército de Deus. Este exército majestoso tem um batalhão de mulheres corajosas. Tais mulheres podem ser comparadas ao carvalho, cujo tronco, quanto mais afetado por ventos e temporais, mais resistente se tornará e cujas raízes mais profundas serão. Tais mulheres também podem ser comparadas ao terebinto, que quanto mais ferido for, mais perfume exalará e mais cura proporcionará com a seiva do seu ferimento. Num mundo tão perverso, cruel e injusto, vale a pena ser a resistência. É tempo de resistir para alcançar esperança. É tempo de aceitar o santo recrutamento corajosamente para mudar nossa história e construir outra muito melhor. Vamos apresentar-nos generosamente para lutar juntas essa guerra. Juntas, a vitória será certa. É vida ou morte? Clame com bravura. Eis-me aqui, soldado de Cristo, eu sou. Eu clamei. E você? Mulheres, vamos à luta.
Sejam todos muito bem-vindos para mais uma transmissão do Instituto Vida para Todos. Chegamos à mensagem 2 da Conferência Internacional de setembro de 2021. Hoje, novamente... Today, once again, I remind all of you that we're here Sunday, the day of the Lord. It's a day that we honor the Lord of our goods, giving our offerings. Remember of the estancia, a tree of life. Remember to give your offerings, voluntarily offerings. For the estancia is mine, the EAV is mine. And also remember uh, in the exterior missions that depend on our donations to sustain that work and remember of also Institute Life for All that works through our contributions. Also remember of your regions, of your region, partners to the gospel or any other need. May you be one of those that offer with their goods, sustaining the work of God and of your church, of your local church, of your city, We need to make for all our structure so that the gospel can be maintained through us. So very good. So we reached a conference that has a theme and the gospel and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. And message two has the title, The Kingdom of God. The Bible reading is Matthew 12, 28. Matthew 21, verse 31 and 43. Thanks to the Lord. When I suggested to the brothers of us entering into this book of Matthew, and we thought about dividing in two parts the book of Matthew for two conferences. The first conference that would be now, starting now, that we're going to try, our focus be the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. That's why we use Matthew 24, 12, the first part, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. And the next, second part, in the other conference, we'll use it as a general theme, And then the end will come. The focus will be, the focus will be the coming of the Lord, the end. So we will start message two among the steam and the gospel and the kingdom shall be preached. Beloved brothers, I want to tell you always the beginning of a conference or the beginning of us dealing with a theme, the responsibility is very great on our part. We, I want, I want to tell you that you may know that even though I already had, the Lord had already given me a feeling of entering the book of Matthew because the book of Matthew talks about the kingdom of the heavens The book of Matthew talks about the preaching of the gospel. I already had had a general vision of the burden that I needed to give. But I don't, I don't have that boldness to do it in my way. And I give the direction. So I needed the direction of the Lord in a clear way. So I will confess to you that last week I was preparing the summary, the outline of the message about Tyra Tyra, about the overcomers and the overcomers in Tyra Tyra that I spoke about Sunday before. I don't know if you remember. And as I was preparing in that week on Thursday, Thursday evening, in the middle of In the, in the night, at two in the morning, I woke up scared. 
I woke up with a weight on my heart. I woke up with fear. I said, Lord, next week, it will be the international conference. Oh, Lord Jesus, I need your direction. I need that, Lord, you may give me your word. Lord, I don't have the boldness to take my knowledge, my biblical knowledge, and give, give a direction, give a line for the churches. I was already imagining the churches, like those little children in the nest of a bird. All the children, all the bird, little birds waiting with their mouth open, waiting for the mom and dad to bring food. And I imagine myself, or what do you thought? The church is waiting for the food, the prophetic word, the book of Matthew, and I don't have anything to give. I was through a lot of fear. I was desperate. I woke up 2 30 in the morning. I went to pray to the Lord, and I went to read the Bible. Of course, in that time and night, the Lord was going to give a, a clear direction, so. But the Lord knew that I was seeking desperately the indication of the Spirit. And then it came. The Lord gave me life. The Lord gave me clarity. Why? Because I act in this way. I don't act. I don't act lightly. I don't want to lightly say that this is a prophetic word because if God is not the author, so I have a responsibility that's very great. That's why I wanted to read with you Deuteronomy the 18. This is a feeling that God gave me this morning. It's not in my outline. Deuteronomy 18, verse 18 says, I will raise a prophet in the midst of their brothers, like you. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. So here it refers to, to Jesus the prophet. He will be the other prophet because Moses was the prophet. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, Jesus will be the other prophet that will be the prophet, uh, the prophet as well. So the prophet of God does not have the liberty to speak his own words. Here it says, I will put in his mouth my words. So God has to put in our mouth his words. And God needs to speak to us. The prophets need to speak everything that God orders us because he's the author and is not the prophet. And all those that don't hear my words in my name, and this shall be the whoever will not hear my words in my name, I will require him. So the word that this prophet speaks in the name of the Lord that word is of God. Like the Thessalonians, they learned the word that Paul preached to them. It was the word of God. So they received as the word of God. And whoever didn't receive as the word of God will have to settle accounts with God. It will be required of them. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Brothers, that's why I have a lot of fear. A lot of, I'm afraid of speaking something that the brothers will receive as a prophetic word, but that the Lord did not speak. Do you understand? So I'm very afraid of this. I have a lot of responsibility. And how do you know? A word came from God. If it says in your heart, and it's saying heart, how shall we know which word is hella spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come to happen or pass, that thing which the Lord has not spoken, the prophet has spoken presumptuously. You should not be afraid of him. 
The spoken has for you presumptuously, and you shall not be afraid of him. Brothers, I don't want to be that person. So therefore, I'm here in fear and trembling. That's why the 2.30 in the morning, I woke up with a lot of fear. I don't want to be presumptuous. I don't want to speak a word in the name of the Lord that the Lord did not speak, and that word will not be fulfilled. Is not true? Oh, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 23. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 23. There's a lot of things to read, but I'll read verse 28. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. But he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, says the Lord? The Lord has a lot of prophets, but brothers, some receive dreams. But the word that gives direction to the people of God, God gives it to the prophet. Moses was the prophet. There were many that prophesied when God were ordained. Perhaps you, I'll read to you, read the numbers, Numbers chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11. Lord Jesus, verse 25, so the Lord, and the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the sword that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. So here, brothers, God can raise many prophets in the churches. But those prophets, God takes out from the prophet the spirit, so that the rest prophets can prophesy. So each one doesn't have liberty to prophesy what they want. They prophesy what the Lord spoke. So in verse 12, chapter 12, it starts with Miriam and Aaron questioning Moses. Verse 2, so they said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. These two were asking that God also spoke through them the prophetic word. They're the Lord, verse 6. So now I hear my words. And when among you there's prophets, I the Lord make him known in a vision. Or I speak to him in a dream. I see there's two categories of prophets. The prophet says that God, the Lord speaks to them in vision and in dreams. That's so why Jeremiah 23 says so he received a dream. We'll say that it's a dream. There's two categories. There's a category that speaks. That if you have prophets, I make him known in a dream. That's a category of prophets. It's not that way with my servant Moses, who is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And so the anger of the Lord rose against them, and he departed. We need to be very afraid with regards to the word of God, and the word of God that's from God has to be confirmed. And we see that in Mark 16, 
Mark 16. What does Mark 16 say? Mark 16, verse 20, 19, 20. And after the Lord spoke to him, and he sat at the right hand of the Father. And they, having left, they preached in every part. And they went out to preach everywhere. The Lord gave a word, gave an order to the church. And the church obeyed. And they took that preaching to all parts. Cooperating with them. The Lord, the Lord working with them. The Lord that was at the right hand of the Father. He's also here, cooperating with those that obey the word and confirming the word. Brothers, this proves that this is of God, confirming the word through signs, through accompanying signs. Thanks for this last three, four years, we have experienced this, haven't we? The Lord gives a prophetic word, and that word is fulfilled. And that word, that same word, that prophetic word, makes the work of God. Makes the work of God. It's not man that has capacity to do the work of God. No man has the power to do the work of God. But it's a word that comes out of the mouth of God that God confirms. God confirms the signs and wonders and he fulfills the word of God. And we have seen in these last years the Lord doing miracles among us, signs happening in our midst. So all of this is because of this. And Second Peter 1, this verse is very important where we took the word prophetic done, prophetic word, and it says, and so we have the prophetic word, verse 19, word confirmed. So we have the prophetic word confirmed. The prophetic word must be confirmed. If it's not confirmed, it's not the prophetic word. It's not the word that comes from God. What you do well well, you do well to heed as a light. Brothers, you do well to heed the prophetic word as a light that shines in the dark place. We are in a dark night, in a night of darkness, where the kingdom of darkness comes, operates, governs in this world, in this dark world. But the church has a light that shines and that light is a light of the lamp stand, which is a prophetic word. So the prophetic word gives us a light that shows the direction. So we have a light that shines in dark place until when? Until the light dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And it rises in our hearts, which was the promise to the overcomers in the church in Tyra For the rest of Tyra the rest that didn't succumb to the teachings of Jezebel, to the rest who did not succumb to spiritual prostitution or idolatry, God promised giving them the morning star. And what about us? And we follow faithfully the prophetic word. And the prophetic word operates among us efficiently. So God does his work through his church that receives the word of God as it truly is. And the work of God had cursed and the will of God is done. And that way we're introducing the dawn. We'll be the first. Before the day dawns, that the day has come, we will have received the morning star. 
and it will clear in our hearts. Oh, Lord Jesus. So given this introduction, beloved brother, I want to tell you, fear and trembling. We want to give a focus to you, a correct focus, to study the book of Matthew. God has a kingdom. His kingdom comes from eternity to eternity. Satan wants to have another kingdom. He's not subjected to the kingdom of God. If he subjects himself or not subjects himself to the kingdom of God, it exists because he dominates from eternity to eternity. So we'll ask for the brothers to project the figure that I used in the conference, the Young People's Conference. That we have the kingdom of God that goes from eternity to eternity. And with a difference with the kingdom of God, which is sexually dealt with in the book of Matthew. So we have the kingdom of God that comes from eternity to eternity. Why? Because before God created all things in this universe, there was only God. Am I correct? There was only God. And God is everything. Do you see? So you can see the kingdom of God goes from eternity to eternity. Why? Because when it started to create, he created from nothing. He didn't go and find, look. And a seek in the, in the construction companies, material to construct. But God created the Hebrew word for creation, Ebada. It means to create from nothing. God created from nothing. God spoke one word. God created all things through the word. He only needs to say the word and creation appears. So, everything comes from God. All creation comes from God. So God goes from eternity to eternity. But when the counting of time starts, when he starts to count times, because on, on the time we have eternity past, and we have eternity future, that's just a, a schematic so that we can understand something which is spiritual. It's under, difficult to understand, but imagine, beloved brothers, that I'm saying when time occurred, when time occurred, it's when what happened in the first heavens. And by the word of God, so everything came from God or didn't come from God. God is or is not the center of connection of all creation that occurred. Everything that he created came out of him. So he is the center of connection. When it came out of him, he didn't lose from vision. Everything that he created came out of him and is connected to him. That's the kingdom of God. And in that kingdom that's connected with God, he governs. He gives authority. He, he reigns in that atmosphere. That's the kingdom of God. Am I wrong? Am I right? No, I'm not right. So I'm, it starts in the first circle. And then... Man fell. Before that, before that, a long time ago, 
Lucifer fell. Well, I'm going to enter here. So for you to have a sketch, this Lord Jesus, I don't know how to illustrate this because I would like to be an illustrator, electronic illustrator to show you. For example, you see that that time frame, which is time from the beginning to the end of a relation when we present new Jerusalem, new heavens, it's the end of time. We have the end, beginning, end. Then I start saying this from all eternity. So that way you see it's a line. It's a line. If you could illustrate, grab that line, and you'll perceive that that line from eternity past and the line from eternity future, it, it emerges or converges together. It gets going to gather together. Someone defined infinity in a certain way. Infinity, if you could do a straight line, make a straight line, and you start walking the line, you could leave. But when you find infinity, you're going to come back to the same point. Are you understanding? No, you don't understand anything. That's infinity. So I'm walking, walking, walking into the infinity. Really, I'm coming back to the same point. So if you can link those two points, it becomes a great circle. Are you understanding? And time, and time, it's almost insignificant in matter of eternity. But the time will do the will of God. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm not going to enter too much because I'll go in slowly. So when you study the book of Matthew, I want to put you in that focus. God had the kingdom of God. But there was a rebellion in the past of an archangel. That archangel, he disconnected himself from God, from the kingdom of God, from the authority of God, and from the government of God. Was this or not? And he took with him a third part of the angels that also rebelled with him. And to him was given the dominion over the kingdom of the earth on the earth, there was creature, pre-Adamic creatures before God created Adam. And these pre-Adamic creatures were under the dominion, uh, under the government of that archangel. And those creatures on earth, they also rebelled. And so chaos entered in the universe. And the Lord cast that very angel to the earth. He isolated the problem in the universe. He isolated here on earth. But when I speak earth, it's not the planet earth. It's a system of the creation of God. Starting from Genesis chapter 1, 2. So that these are planets, the galaxies, God isolated this world in our world. To do what? Because God wants to use the church now to resolve this problem. That's why the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew is for us, for us again, to bring the government of God here on earth. Amen. There was this rebellion. God then wanted to re do that earth. That's where the earth suddenly. That was created, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. And all of a sudden it became out form and empty, void and empty. That's in verse two of Genesis chapter one, right? So this means what? That when God, when you disconnect yourself from the kingdom of God, your life becomes chaos. Your life becomes disorder and confusion. 
our co-porters, our brothers on the streets praying for people. It's not strange to find people who have a life completely destroyed, a life completely disordered, everything out of place. Why? Because there was a disconnection of the kingdom of God. The gospel wants to reconnect people to the kingdom of God. And once reconnected to the kingdom of God, everything enters back in its place. Everything goes back to have order to receive the dispensing of the life of God. So that's why this focus that we'll see the book of Matthew. Do you understand? I'm not worried for studying, doing doctrinal chapter by chapter. I want to show you this focus. This is the focus of God. God wants to receive the kingdom. God wants to receive the authority of God here on earth. So why the kingdom of heavens? So when there was generated the church, the church became an island in this world of darkness. In this world of darkness where God can't do his will, but in the church, God does his will. So in the church, as for the heavens, they order the earth. In the world, Satan has dominion. He's stealing, he's killing, and he's destroying people. Isn't this, this is not what you find in the streets. People completely destroyed. But thanks to the Lord, the kingdom of God the heavens through the church has come. And when the heaven gets here through the preaching of the gospel, we are once again reordering people, bringing them to the kingdom of heavens. And the kingdom of heavens, when everything is concluded in the church, girlfriend life, being taken care, and education of the church, at the end, the church will bring the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven, which is the millennial. And in the end, when everything is ready, Satan will be cast to the lake of fire. Death will be cast to the lake of fire. There will be nothing more that will be under the kingdom of God. And then God will reign. He will be everything and everyone again which means everything and everyone. He was everything. What he created, wasn't he everything and everyone and all? But with the rebellion, that link was this broken. But now in the end of time, we're gonna bring everything back to God to be everything and everyone. Connect all things with God. And now, we can study Matthews. You understand? We need we need that introduction. We need that focus. So we understand why is the gospel of Matthew, the purpose of the gospel of Matthew. I didn't even enter my summary, my sketch. Well, let's go up there now. Who wrote Matthew? Who wrote the book of Matthew? The gospel of Matthew, who wrote it? You don't have courage to say it? Matthew. Wasn't it Matthew? Who who wrote the book of the Gospel of Matthew? It was Matthew. And who was Matthew? I will read what Strong says. Matthew was a publican, a tax collector. They use a Greek word telonis, which is a tax collector. Those that were tax collectors were uh, a class that were hated, detested by not only the Jews or other nations because of their job and also their cruelty, their greed and deceit used to accomplish their task. You understand? That publicans, tax collectors, 
was a tax collector. And tax collectors in those times worked for the Roman Empire. And they collected taxes to give to Rome. So they're already not seen well just because of this. People from their own nation, if they're Jew, the Jews hated. They're working for Rome. And second place, a tax collector. I don't want to generalize. Many do extortion. Many cause pressure. They get easy money by the outside. And they're usually very rich, very rich. It wasn't different in that time. It probably was worse in that time. That's what Strong describes. I'll read a note from the recovery version. Matthew also called Levi. Levi is also Matthew. A tax collector that became an apostle. Let's read Matthew 9, 9. So you can confirm that he became an apostle. Matthew 9, 9. And Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he said to him, follow me. And so he arose and followed him. It's a miracle. A guy that was sitting there on money. Everybody wanted to be rich like he was. He had the best job. And when Jesus came, he said, follow me, follow him. He left everything and he followed the Lord. Luke 5, 27. Luke chapter 5, verse 27. And these things happening, he saw a publican. And after these things, he went and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax of it. He said, then follow me. So he left all, rose up and follow him. Look at the power of the Lord Jesus, the miracle. The, mag the magneticism that he, the Lord Jesus had. He passed by someone, he said, follow him, and that person leaves everything and follows him. Hallelujah. And we, weren't we, weren't we attracted by that magnetism? Did he leave everything too? Did he leave everything to follow the Lord? Hallelujah. The authority shows a mission of he doesn't talk about himself a lot. He admits. In, in Matthew 9, 10, Matthew 9, 10, it, it talks about reception. When he saw Jesus, he did a banquet for him, 9, 10. And now it happened, at Jesus on the, the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came, the publicans were classified as sinners, together with the sinners, the same category, publican and sinners. And he sat down with him and Jesus. And behold, many in the first sign, they said, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sinners to repentance. And also this allusion to himself as a tax collector. As in Matthew 10, 3, when he speaks the 12 disciples, when he talks about Matthew, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. That's not nice to put, but he wanted to put it. And Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphys, and, and this is a restoration I'm going to read the New King James note, Matthew, 
who had as a name Levi, Mark, Mark 2.14. And he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphys, sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. So Matthew is Levi, whose name means gift of God. He was a tax collector in service of Rome, but he abandoned a life of grief and dishonesty to serve, to follow Jesus, the Messiah. Matthew 9, 9 to 13. And Mark and Luke, he's called by another name, Levi. So now I'm going to read a note of an author named Matthew, Matthew Henry. The writer was Jewish from birth, publican by vocation, until Christ solicited his presence, and he left the tax collector of, of taxes to follow him, and he became part of those that followed the Lord in all the time. And he entered from the baptism of John until the day that the Lord was received And that's in Acts, Acts chapter 1, that shows that all, all 12, all 12 disciples and the apostles of the Lord Jesus, all of them had a, had a qualification. And the qualification was described in these two verses. This was in choosing to substitute. Judas died. And that therefore, of these men who accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day that he was taken up from us, one of them must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So the disciples, to be part of 12 disciples, to be part of 12 apostles, they needed to a witness, an eyewitness of the whole period of Jesus during his ministry, right? From the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist until the day that he went to the heavens, all the moments, one of the 12 was there near to Jesus. And so Matthew was a witness, a competent testimony of what he registered, were informed that he wrote this story about eight years after the ascension of Christ. So this Arthur affirms that after the ascension of Christ in Acts 1, eight years later, he wrote the gospel of Matthew. But why am I writing, reading this note? I want to show you the following. Why did God use Matthew to write the gospel? Because he was a tax collector. Because he was a publican. He knew all the, all the things about politics and government. You don't understand me? For him to understand the importance of a kingdom he needed have participated of someone linked to the government. If you get a fisherman, any fisherman to write Matthew, he was not going to talk about the kingdom, but Matthew speaks about the kingdom. Do you understand? God prepares each person. Mark. Who was Mark? Who was Mark? It was a young guy, young boy, John Mark. Who was Mark? That boy, then the first trip with Barnabas and Saul. He left. He couldn't withstand the suffering. He left. And that same Mark, after Mishur, 
He followed Peter. And Peter told all the details of his gospel. Gospel wrote, Mark wrote the gospel. But Mark represents the gospel of a savior servant. Because of his past, of his experience. And Luke, Luke was a doctor that wrote, investigated, and detailed, very detailedly, all the life of Jesus he wrote as a, a, a doctor. And a doctor deals with men. So the third gospel of Luke speaks of the Savior man. Matthew is king, someone linked to the government. And the second is a young man, Mark, that stayed near Peter, a slave. And the third gospel is the gospel of Luke, of a man, of a true man. And the fourth gospel is John. John wrote, Jesus as God. Isn't it? He's God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. What's the objective of the book? The main objective of the Gospel of Matthew is to relate. I'll read a note from King James Revised. is to give the personal testimony of the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the promised Messiah, promised in the Old Testament, whose mission Messianic mission was to bring the kingdom of God to humanity. The Jews, even today, are waiting for the Messiah. But Matthew already told them the a Messiah already arrived. That Messiah is Christ, is Jesus Christ. And already he already came. He came to bring the kingdom of God on earth. He came as a Messiah, and his mis messianic mission is to bring the kingdom of God to man. And I'm going to read a small portion of the life study of Matthew. The general sketch of Matthew is Christ is Jehovah God incarnate to be the kingdom savior that came to establish the kingdom of the heaven. That means the gov heavenly government to save his people from sin, of rebellion, of disconnection, through death, through his death and resurrection. Are you are starting to understand everything? Understand the book of Matthew? The kingdom, the kingdom of God, refers to the dominion of God in the illustration the dominion of God from eternity past to the future eternity. God reigns in the universe from eternity past, while beginning, while, the, while end. This includes the beginning of time, where creation, when the time begins, open your Bible, Genesis 1 1. I don't think you need to, you already know, right? Genesis 1 1. Here, this time begins. Before that was eternity. And then God initiates creation and time begins. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then time began. And when does time end? Revelation 21. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I, in verse one, and now I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first heaven has passed away. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. And also there was no more sea. There will be no fishing, Amir. There's no more sea. Then I saw, then I just saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God 
is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The Jerusalem Bible translated by the last phrase says, and him, him, and God with him, our God, in the end of times, he will be a God with man. So God, who is God with man, will be his God. Do you understand? So we will be inserted in God. Like Jesus said in Matthew, in Matthew 17, here will be the end, the conclusion of the work that God needed to do during the time to re-bring the government of God, the kingdom of God on earth, and God can finally connect his church. His church is not only connected, As a creature, but the church will be connected to God Himself. In the same way as the Father, we're one. I'm one. John 17. I wanted to economize time. Let's go there. John 17. Oh, Lord Jesus. Verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I and them, and you and me. And you who follow me, that they may be made perfect in one. And verse 24. Father, I desire that you, that they also, whom, I just said that also whom you gave me may be where you are, I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Here, I wanted to jump, verse 21, what's the most important, that says, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they all may be one in us. So us, the, world, the church, is not just connected to God as a creature, as a creation. We will be created with God as a new creation. And the new creation will be inserted in God. So that Let's repeat. So that they may be one Então, não seremos reconectados com Deus como criatura somente, nós seremos conectados com Deus como a nova criatura, fazendo parte dessa entidade universal juntamente com Deus triuno. Irmão, não é maravilhoso? Por isso, irmão, precisa do tempo. E esse tempo é para fazer esse trabalho. Por isso, vamos pregar o Evangelho. O Evangelho do Reino. Reconectar as pessoas com Deus. Colocar a vida de Deus em ordem. Vocês corporadores, vocês têm a obrigação de colocar a vida das pessoas que vocês oram em ordem. Senhor Jesus. Vou falar um pouco do mistério da criação. Hebreus capítulo 11, versículo 3. Dá uma olhada. Hebreus 11, versículo 3. Pela fé, entendemos que foi o universo formado pela palavra de Deus. 
Não foi buscar na loja de matéria de construção para ele criar o um mundo, não. Tudo foi formado pela palavra de Deus. Por isso, irmão, vocês vejam o poder que tem a palavra de Deus. Vamos, vamos apreciar mais a palavra de Deus. Ela faz a obra de Deus. Entendemos que foi o universo formado pela palavra de Deus, de maneira que o visível veio a existir das coisas que não aparecem, na verdade, é das coisas invisíveis, das coisas que não se veem. O, o visível, na verdade, a, a criação, a parte visível, ele veio das coisas que já existiam, de invisíveis. Existe uma parte das coisas invisíveis que é o próprio Deus. Né? Então, tudo que Deus é, quando Ele cria, Ele joga essa coisa que é invisível, Ele joga para coisa visível. Então, a criação, né? ó Senhor Jesus, não sei como explicar para vocês, como, por exemplo, como como no primeiro dia da recriação de Deus, Gênesis, né, do Gênesis 1 ali, Deus disse o quê? Deus disse com uma palavra, haja luz. E houve luz. Mas essa luz, do lado invisível, já existia. Quem é luz? 1 João 1, Deus é luz. Vocês entenderam? Então, essa luz que nós estamos vendo aqui são... Ondas, ondas eletromagnéticas. Me embananou a cabeça, né? Essa luz que vocês veem são ondas eletromagnéticas em várias frequências diferentes. Mas isso tudo é o visível que veio do invisível. Isso aqui é a sombra. A realidade é Deus. Por exemplo, por exemplo, no terceiro dia, Deus mandou ajuntar as águas num só lugar, não é isso? Aí apareceu a terra seca. Quando apareceu a terra seca, começou a produzir relva, ervas e árvores que dão sementes. E, 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 e o seed, e o Deuteronômio 8, diz, Cristo é um bom land. Where there's all types of production, like the, the wells, fountains, and rivers. And then it went to, there was iron, copper. So, who was that reality? It was Christ himself. Christ was in the part, in the visible part. When God said, let there be a dry portion, he appeared. You understand? So everything that God created came from the invisible of who he is, his reality. Oh, Lord Jesus. The co-porters here are crazy. So John chapter 1. Now you understand better John chapter 1. Verse 1 says, in the beginning, It was the word. You understand the word? Everything comes from the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was of God. And the word was God. So even the word that God creates all things is God. Is the son of God. Is the second one in the Trinity. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him and without him nothing that was created anything that was done for he was the beginning and all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made all things were made by him through him and without him nothing that was made wouldn't have been made so god created a mirror of the invisible things for the visible things and everything was through jesus christ And it goes through Christ, it goes through the visible. Everything is through him and for him. And the life was in him. And him was the life, and the life was the light of man. 
Oh Lord Jesus, we know I'm going to have to go in quickly in rebellion, the rebellion of the archangel. And he, he fell because of pride. A pride of what? Pride of his wisdom and beauty. And he was very wise. It's to be used by God. And so he thought he was very wise. I want to explain better. Very wise, very beautiful. Be careful of physical beauty. The sisters are very beautiful. And the men who are very handsome, they have pride. But Christ, he wasn't wise. He was wisdom himself. Let's look at Proverbs. Oh, Lord Jesus. Proverbs chapter 8. Oh, Lord Jesus. Verse 12. It says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and expression. The Son of God Himself, the Second in Trinity, is wisdom. The fear of God is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. The wisdom hates. I am wisdom. And then me, there's sin. Verse 22. The Lord possesses the beginning of his way. He works before his work. From eternity to eternity, it was established. The beloved brothers, Christ, the second eternity, the Son. He is wisdom himself. He was already from the beginning, from the work of creation, from eternity, he was already established as wisdom from the beginning, before the beginning of the earth. Before there were no deaths on the earth, there was no fountain in the water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills I was brought forth, while he I did not make the earth of the primal dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above. When he stained the fountains of the deep. And when he assigned the sea its limit. So that the waters would not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master craftsman. I was his master craftsman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before me. The father and son did in a in a in a delight in a joy. This is beginning of a beautiful relationship. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing always before him. There was no fear. With, with Lord, there's no boredom. There's always joy. There's only joy. There's only good relationships. Rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men. The sons of men are created. 
for God to delight. Oh, Jesus. Colossians 1, you know well. If I want to read it. Colossians 1, 15 to 17. Oh, Jesus. Verse 3, she filled the kingdom. He liberated her of the kingdom of darkness, of the authority of darkness, and he transported her to the kingdom of his love, to the matter of the kingdom. God wants to take us the kingdom of darkness and places the kingdom of the Son of God. And when he has a redemption. And he's the image of the invisible God. Who's Lucifer to compete with the Son of God? To compete with the Son. He's the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation. Oh, Jesus. He was the first one to be created. And him, and him will create all things in our heaven and on earth. Verse 16. The visible and invisible. Whatever thrones or divisions or principalities or powers. All things are created through him and for him. Even Lucifer. That God gave authority. He was created through Christ. He was. Everything was created through him, for him and through him. There was nothing that wasn't created through him and also for him. And he is before all things. And in him, everything subsists. I did many illustrations. I wanted to, to project. Verse 17, and he is before all things. All uh, before all things. Before you create a figure. You need to have a starting point. And you want to make a circle. A circumference. He's the center of the circle. The center of the circle. He is that center. He's before all things. For God to pay all things, he had to put him as a second. And so while he was in the center for all things, he is also one. And everything consists. Everything consists. Also comes from the first figure. It's imprisoned to the center. If you take out the center, it starts being a circumference. If you let loose, if you let loose, there's no more circumference. So everything has to be linked to the center. And everything has to be linked to a circle. That whole area. So the Lord is the center. And him, everything subsists. It subsists in Greek. In Greek, it's Sunni style. Sunni style. He's the one that unites all things and everything and all. Do you understand? While Christ, there's no creation. And while Christ, there's no connection. While Christ, everything is loose. And there will be no kingdom of God. Do you understand? Thanks to God, Christ is the center. And Christ unites all things. One more figure. Now three-dimensional. It's a, a sphere. Christ is that point in the center. In the center. And all the superficial, the spherical sphere is linked to Christ. He thinks through Christ being the center. 
That makes us this all the Naomi is a superficial thing. But all the value, all the sphere is linked to Christ. Christ is a Sunni soul. He's one that unites all things and all. That's where we're born. Where all things are born, it comes from the center and are united to the center. We're connected. With God. Others. When God created all things, even today we know. We read Proverbs 8, Colossians 1. We read so many verses. But brothers, that was a secret. Lucifer, he didn't know this. I want to sh show you this. Ephesians 3. Lord Jesus, Ephesians 3. How by revelation he made to me the mystery, as I have briefly written by what you read, by what you remember, my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as has been revealed now to the Spirit. To his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit to know that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Me, who are the smallest, was given me this grace. I preach to the Gentiles the riches of the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been given in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. The ages have been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. These God maintained the secret. The secret of what? That everything was created through Christ. The secret of what? That Christ is the firstborn of all creation. Everything was created by him, through him, and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things subsist. So everything was a secret. Why? Verse 10. To attend that now the many full wisdom of God may be known by the church. Now that was revealed to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. They didn't know. They didn't know. That's why Satan wanted before falling. He wanted to be the element. I want to say a, a little bit about his rebellion. Let's see if there's time. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Oh, Lord Jesus, verse 12, 14, 12. Oh, how you fallen, the star of the morning. How you were cast on earth. You were cut down to the ground. Oh, how you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you were cut down to the ground. And the word morning star in Lyon and in Latin, Vulgata, is Lucifer. It's more easier to understand Lucifer. So we'll use, we'll call him Lucifer. Lucifer was created full of wisdom and beauty. That's in Ezekiel. Let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. 28, verse 13, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. I say to them, thus, this 
in beauty. So that angel, the leader of the angels is created as a prince, as a leader, was created as a seal of perfection. The seal of perfection. He was created in a perfect way, full of wisdom and full of beauty. But he didn't know that Jesus himself is wisdom. And you were, I'm not going to read all this because of time. This reading indicates that he was a prince. He was created to be a king, to govern, for God. In verse 17, 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Why? Because verse 17, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your slander. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze at you. O oh, Lord Jesus, for the multitude of your iniquities, you defy the sanctuaries because of multiple iniquities by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought you from fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you and all who knew you among the people who were astonished at you. He, he was judged by God. And so this was Lucifer. That was an angel, like a king, created to be a king. To create to be a prince, he possessed the highest position in the universe, pre-Adamic. That, beloved brothers, probably God had anointed an archangel to reign over the pre-Adamic nation. The authority and glory of this earth had probably given to him. That's why, therefore, in the temptation of Jesus, He spoke to Jesus, if you worship me, the kingdom of the earth and the glory were given to me, and I can give them to you. He didn't give it to God. He should have given it back to God. He didn't give it back to God. For the church will take it. God didn't take it, but the church will take it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. One day, he found, I thought he was very wise. One day, he thought he was very perfect, very beautiful. He liked it. At the compliment of all. He liked the place of being highlighted. He liked the show light of the, of the fame, of the glory. There was no one above him. It was only God. And then he said, I'm going to go up. Let's go to Isaiah. I'll go up higher. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. You said in your heart, I will go up to the heavens. Above the stars of God, I exalt my throne. And in the table of the On the mountains, I will, the north is where the throne of God is. I will go to the highest clouds and I'll be like the most high. Oh, my Jesus. And everything were precipitated for the kingdom and the, he was thrown here. Oh, Lord Jesus. I went up, I went up, I went up. He didn't see anything above him. You remember the Leviathan? That Job discovered that there was a Leviathan, a, a beast that was ferocious beast, and that was a king of all the practical animals. And he despised everything that's high, remember the verse? Everything that's superior to him, he despised because I'm higher. 
I'm stronger. I'm more beautiful. I'm, I'm more wise. Brothers, iniquity entered him. The rebellion began. That's my brothers. The problem of rebellion against the kingdom of God began with Lucifer. But brothers, he wanted to propose to God. God, you're the creator. I'm a creature. I'm the one that's above all the other creatures. I'm perfect. I'm good. I'm more wise. I'm, I'm more beautiful. You are creator. Don't know the creatures. You don't know their problems. And I can be your intermediate. I can be your adjunct king. I can help you make that connection with a creature. I understand the creature. I'm a creature. He wanted to be co-king. He wanted to be the adjunct king. He wanted to be the connection with God creator and the creatures. But he didn't know that God already had a plan in Christ. Because it was a mystery. It was only revealed in the time of the apostles and prophets. Lucifer didn't know. He didn't know. God already had planned Christ. Thank you, Lord. So he wants to be the same as God. The motivation be the same as God. It's already rebellion. It's already pride. God cast into the earth. And says God rejected him, disconnected him from the kingdom of God. He said, I'm going to make my own kingdom. To make my kingdom. I need to do. I need followers. To have followers. I need to do my negotiations. That's the Bible. And Ezekiel 28 speaks about commerce, trade. And then King James talks about business. He started negotiating. And that's how Brazil works. Negotiate the, the position. If you support me, I'll give you a, a position here. I'll put you first place, second place, third place, okay? Brother, he created a group of principalities and powers. In the book of Daniel, We have the Prince of Persia of Greece. So he negotiated many, negotiated, and he started to be violent. And violence started to enter him, and corruption too, and negotiation. And today he has an army, a strong army, the principalities of power. The Ephesians said of the, the evil powers of darkness. Holy Jesus. Yet. When you remember. When God said of, God, of Job. Oh, look at look at Job. He's my servant. A correct man. Upright. He doesn't do evil. There's no one like him. What does Satan say? Satan said to God, what did he tell him? God, you don't know him. You don't know the creature. Do you understand what I want to tell you? He wants to, he wants to say that God creates creature, that God needs him to govern the creature. You don't know creature. I'm creature. Take out. You give everything. If God everything, of course, praise the Lord. Take out, take out everything from him. And God said, okay, take it out. Take off things. He, take it, he took everything away. But Job didn't deny God. And then he gathered again in Job 2. Job you see my servant? I'm not reading because of time. You can read at home. And then... Oh, but you didn't touch him. You took all the goods, his family. We're trying to mess with him, with his life. Touch him. Don't just take his life. You can do whatever you want. He's in your hands. But when? 
But here, it's not about the body. Job discovered in the whole book of Job, arguing, 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 he discovered that in his soul, there's a prideful beast. And that prideful beast is called Bemoth or Leviathan. Bemoth is like the one that's. And Leviathan shows already what it came from. It's a prideful animal. So, reality, in the end of times, God allowed for Satan to do what he did with Job. He made Job suffer. Job only to learn to discover that his sin was not just in touching his body. But those three friends of his, they touched with his ego, with his pride. And there, that's when the beast came out. And then he started saying, talk to God. He said, what did he say? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you remember? Help me. In what chapter it is? Job? For Jesus, for Jesus. Job, Job chapter 10, verse 10. Satan wanted to show that he was the right guy to govern, to help govern the creature. Job 10, verse 4. Job started to complain. Do you have eyes of flesh, God? Or do you see as man sees? You don't understand, man. You don't understand creature. You're the creator. That, that venting was in Satan's heart, Lucifer's heart. Are your days the days of a mortal man? Are your ears the days of a mighty man? That you should seek for my iniquity and search out my sin? Look at the arrogance. I'm speaking with God. Although you know that I'm not wicked and there's no one who can deliver me from your hand. Your hand. I'm not going to continue. Just to know that God used Satan to expose what was in the heart of Job's heart. And at the end, what did Job see? Let's look. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Chapter 41 of Job. The Lord showing the ugly beasts are in him. Verse 33. On earth there's nothing like him which is made out without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. Brothers, there's only Satan objectionably. But inside of Job, that was this beast inside of him. Inside of fallen man is this beast of pride that comes from Satan. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's why. In 42, verse 1, then Job answered the Lord, I know you can do everything and that no purpose or yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who has come from knowledge? Therefore, I utter what I did not understand. These see things so wonderful of me, which I did not know. Listen. Creature doesn't know a lot of things. God maintained in secret many things for the archangel. And many, unless us, we don't know things. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you should answer me. I've heard you only by hearing the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I bore myself and repent and dust and ashes. Brothers, who knows God? Then repent. When we know God, we repent because we think we know. Satan thinks he's capable and God needs of him. God needs of you to lead the people to preach the gospel. People need you to do his work. God doesn't need. God uses man as a channel. As a bush. But the bush 
It's not the not the the fuel for the fire. The power comes from God. The bush is just a support. How can the fire go to the street and the bush doesn't go? Yes, God needs you. But the power is from God. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. So, Ephesians 3, I showed you that the mystery was revealed. God constituted the Son to be the heir of all things. It's not Lucifer. It's the Son of God. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I wanted to finish, but again, I extended. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 2. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has been appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Lucifer didn't know about this. The Father defined that the Son would inherit all things. It was not Lucifer. He's who is being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. After he made the perfect purge our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, than the angels. Superior to who? He is referring to Lucifer. Much better than the angels as he had been including in Lucifer. Jesus is superior to you, Lucifer, as he has been by inheritance of a more excellent name than they. The name of Jesus is much higher than Lucifer's name. I don't have much more time, but I will conclude with Psalm 2. Can I finish with Psalm 2? Psalms 2? Oh, Lord Jesus. Satan deeds the rebellion on earth, the earth, the kingdoms of the serve all against God. And then why do the why do the people imagine futile things? And the princes conspire against God, against his anointed one. They say, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away the cords from us. People now, men today, they don't want any limitation of God but they want to do whatever they want. Men don't want any more restriction, moral restriction or ethical restriction or spiritual because men want deparation. They want to do things that they want to do. They want to break any bonds they have with God. We want to connect again to God and men don't want to be linked. He who says who abides in the heavens. And God says, who are you? He says, I shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in the surgeon. And he shall speak to them in the desertion. He said, wait till the day of the Lord comes. You will see where the arrogance of this people. Of this pride and all these things. But verse 6. Yeah, I have sent my king on my holy hill of Zion. Amen. I, I didn't pray you, Lucifer. I have my king. The God that governs the kingdom of God. The God that dominates all things. He shows his son to be king over the holy mountains, proclaiming to the God. He said, you are my son, and I, today I begotten you. His son became a man. He became flesh and became in the likeness of flesh. This other point that I'll speak later. I'll speak later. We spoke yesterday. 
And Jesus is a man. He became a man. He knows men. He can have mercy on you. He knows of your pain, your suffering. He knows a creature. Is this not or is it? God doesn't need Lucifer. God has a son. Yes, Christ. Then the father says, ask me, and I will give you the nations of the inheritance. And the extremities as your possession. Ask to me. And the son asks, and I'll give to you. And the son will rule the nations with iron rods. And here to reign, to rule, is to shepherd. The authority that God has is to shepherd, to put everything in order, to God dispense his love, to God dispense everything that he is, all his riches. This is the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, brothers, again, I didn't calculate well the time. There's many things I need to speak, and I'll speak next message. But anyways, I will believe I give you a general vision why why angle we're going to enter the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew needs to enter in this angle that God wants to restore the kingdom here on earth. And he will use the church for this. The church is a reality of the kingdom of God in the whole world. Satan dominates. But in the church, he doesn't. In the church, the heavens dominate. The heavens reign in us and they have authority over us. Christ heads up all things, beginning with the church. Amen. May God bless you all. May you live in this day connected to the Lord, connected to Him. Don't do anything in yourself. You know, this morning, I always do this. I got on my knees on my bed. You are the king. You're my king. I don't have the right to do what I want. I'm a citizen of the, of the kingdom. Of, do your will in my life. Use me, Lord, as your member. You're the one that reigns. Reign in me. In this attitude, Lord. I come here to give this word. God bless all of you. Amen. Amen, Lord Jesus. My name is Pedro. I'm from Londrina, from Paraná. And truly, brother, what a wonderful word. Because the Lord presented in the gospel of Matthew as a kingdom. And the Lord, on one hand, we see the rebellion. Satan comes to attack. He's attacking. But the Lord gave us a church. Praise the Lord, this whole universe. He separated the time for the church, Philadelphia. E tá nos usando para gente God prepared and he's using us to see the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord Jesus. And more impressed, I was impressed in this message. It was a part of Matthew. That magnetism of the Lord. He usually called Matthew, come follow me. And he followed him. And we need to have that today. The Lord needs to have people with that magnetism. People so connected with the Lord. That when we pray with someone on the street, when we go out, we interact with any person who appears as the Lord. It's a magnetism of the Lord. Lord Jesus. How wonderful, brother. That word needs to have some practice in our life. We need to have that magnetism of the Lord. And Matthew went. Well, Lord Jesus, I want to be like that Matthew. I want to be, I want God to ask of me, and I want to follow. I want to play in the practice, restore the kingdom on earth. And Lord Jesus, and all this is by the word. And the word has not been lacking us. That we can each day have that spirit. The spirit of hearing the word and putting it in practice. Because we're just a channel. But God needs that channel to put that word in practice. And let the Lord do the work. Let the Lord do the work. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Aleluia. Senhor Jesus. Lord Jesus. Muito feliz. Graças I'm very happy. Deus, né? Nossa. Thanks to the Lord. Eu sou de Chapecó. I'm from Chapecó. My name is David. Thanks to the Lord. Senhor Jesus. Estamos no tempo. E isso me, 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 me trouxe assim, realmente um temor e tremor. And that really brought me fear and tremor. A nossa importância, irmãos, nesse... That are important in this kingdom. In this kingdom. Senhor, né? Oh, Senhor Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Precioso. How the time is precious. Agora, the time that we have now to truly to take this kingdom for the Lord. To put everything in practice. And complete submission and simplicity. Having the Lord as our head. And truly putting this work of all our Jesus, of being obedient, to be headed up, not doing a particular work, but go out to work. Let's work. Let's rescue people. Let's reconnect people with God. It's something very serious. The time that we have. Oh, Senhor Jesus, and those people like that, Ontem, to be beheaded up by the Lord. De, Yesterday, a team went down. E ali foi, foram algumas horas, foram, graças ao Senhor, né? Foram distribuídos 200. And thank the Lord. Louvado seja o Senhor. Quatro. Six é, books were trabalho. distributed. E realmente, Doing the work. Uh, And truly, brothers. É do Senhor. Ele que faz This work is from the Lord. Nós realmente somos esse suporte, né? We're just esse, a support. Essa, essa sarça. That bush that takes all the glory and the power of God. And then families were also open. They're open to live the church life. So thank the Lord. The Lord is truly doing the work. And God is counting on each one of us. And each one of us has his importance. In this kingdom. And all of us are important. Amém. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen, irmãos. Amen, brothers. My name is Aline from Santa Maria. What a word, brothers. Oh, Lord Jesus. The word that comes from God has to be confirmed. And the Lord gives a prophetic word. And the word is fulfilled. Oh, Lord Jesus. The word that comes from the word of God. Deus and God confirms the sign. He wants to use the church Deus. to bring the kingdom oh, government of God to earth. When you get disconnected from the word of God, it becomes a chaos. The gospel is to reconnect people to the kingdom. And they connected everything has order. Lord Jesus. God wants the kingdom to be back on earth. He wants to connect all things to God. That's why we need time. And this time to do the work to put people's lives in order. We're practicing pra dynamic the corporate per hour. And God has blessed us a lot. Has changed our lives. All our Jesus and everything that's happening is fruit of the prophetic speaking that we're receiving. All our Jesus. The people, brothers, are thirsty and want to know more. We have the care network at Hallelujah for the care network. That truly the cycle is closed. We're going to bring the Lord back. Amen. Amen, brothers. Jesus is Lord. The Lord wants to really reconnect men. He desires to the gospel. Connect all things. So I'm really encouraged through this word. It has brought has connected man. All these signals, these people, how many prayers they received, bringing into their homes, this mystery of reconnecting, of connecting man. God to bring this to bring what a wonderful word 
Nós this is what the Lord wants them to do. We're in time. God, is the, the church is in time. And this is a short time compared to eternity. There's a time that we can change all sorry. So we're thankful to the Lord that he trusted to each one of us. He trusted me to you. When God showed Matthew, what magnetism well, a magnetism. When we reach people, can I, may I pray for you? The people are open. They're receiving that magnetism. They're converting to the Lord. There are, there are people disconnected, even Christians, that weren't seeking the Lord. When people are reconnected to God, that authority, that government, are bringing to God through the church. Jesus is the Lord. Let's advance. Let's cooperate the Lord. Because that word of the kingdom is for us. The, Lord, the church is bringing the kingdom. He didn't give this to angels, to Satan. He gave to us. And what a lot of humbleness we're going to bring that kingdom. Jesus is the Lord. Amen. I'm Paulo Vargas from Porto Alegre. And I consider someone a blessed person to hear these words. Truly, we have a channel. We have a prophet of God. We're not on the wall. We're one with him. And this word does the work. We're witnesses of this. We're eyewitnesses of this through his servant, has operating effectively, has done great things. So praise the Lord that we're secure. We have the prophetic word that each side shines more. What introduction of the spirit that we have. And something that shocked me was, was the person of Matthew. Matthew is someone connected to the Roman Empire, completely involved in the dark empire. The man was there. Everything on the wall. But when he sees Jesus, he's attracted. And he's disconnected from the darkness. And he goes connected immediately to the center. What word? I'm a publican. I'm a tax collector. But I was connected to Jesus Christ, to the prophetic word. And now I can do that. Connect people with the empire darkness who are in pieces. Connect them to the triune God. Us are God. This is our destiny. I'm not going to lose for anything. I'm not going to stop being simple or be. I'm going to practice this prophetic word. And I beg you, let's practice this word. Let's hear the word from the servant. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. May the Lord continue blessing his servants and bless the churches, giving them the prophetic word. Who has ears, let them hear with the spirit and Amen. Yeah.